think when people come out with us, they're like, oh, I could do that because it's very quiet and it just looks like we're hiking in the woods with the dogs. But what they don't realize is there's an entire undercurrent of communication happening. I would love to even have a minute um, inside of Ilson's brain as he sniffs, like what is really going on? They have, you know, millions of olfactory receptors and ours is only a fraction. They see their world totally different. work. There's a little teeny tiny um, larva that we put out from the Oregon Zoo. We just want the dogs to, before we go out into the field where they are, just have a reminder of what we're sniffing for. So it's super tiny. <laughs> It's like a grain of rice right there. What's there? Did you even smell it? Nice job. Good boy. Good boy. So there's a lot of um, diverse odors out there that dogs can help us find information on that otherwise is very challenging for researchers to obtain information otherwise. And then we're able to collect that information non-invasively. My biggest desire to be in this field was to have that impact on a threatened or endangered species, that we are directly assisting and providing information um, that brings about some sort of positive effects towards their recovery. That's where it was. Yes. <gasps> Good job! It's really easy for them very quickly to learn, oh, this odor equals playtime. If given enough time, I think dogs can really assist in, in getting to the bottom of these questions that have been stumping researchers over and over and over again for years. And so we're kind of like the last ditch effort, like can the dogs come in and save the day? And So one of the projects that's super exciting for us is um, working with the Oregon Silver Spot Butterfly Larva. The Oregon Silver Spot Butterfly is a threatened species and um, their range is shrinking um, quite drastically. There's a captive breeding program going on for this species, um, releasing adults in the wild so everyone can see the adults, but they didn't know if their efforts were working. And so that's kind of where the dogs come in. If we can find the larva before they release the adults, then we can know whether or not that population is in fact you know, breeding and recovering. Often the dogs that we adopt are out of chances. We see them come from the shelter shy, nervous, fearful. Um, some have had issues, behavioral issues with aggression, and they, they're just kind of the unwanted. And then we bring them in and we teach them this game, and before you know it, um, they're just a whole new dog. We're giving these dogs back a bit of their little bit of a wild side. I have never met other beings with as big a soul as dogs. They don't ask questions, you know, they don't, they don't doubt you. They support you every step of the way. They encourage you, they bring joy. They accept us in all our faults. They accept us in all of our mistakes. I don't know of any other relationship that I get to have where I'm always accepted for who I am. Oh yeah, here's a feeding sign. So we found uh, we found a silver spot larva. 
There was a lot of heating sign on these violets and it was kind of tucked away back behind a coast strawberry leaf. And so we're going to use this, this wild caterpillar to try to help Filson recognize the scent that we're after. Come over here. You're so close. Nice, good boy. What was we do? Where'd it go? It's kind of hidden up in the strawberry leaves there. Oh. And I just saw its head poking out, just a little no bit way. of shine on the head, right? <laughs> that's that's why it's key to have a number of different eyes here because you, everyone's going to see things a little bit differently, and and you just hope that somebody gets the right angle, at the right time, and picks up these really cryptic little caterpillars. <laughs> Well done. Oh, that was good, Wilson. <laughs> you put your nose right on it. I think the more that we realize um, how dogs see their world differently than us, the more we can kind of imagine and design new project ideas um, that they could help us with because I, there's just so much out there that we don't yet understand about how things are connected. We might in some way be providing like that, that clue, the answer that, that they need in order to understand what this species might need um, for recovery. And I, I also think that part of the secret sauce to this methodology, even though it's a science method, is love. Like it doesn't work unless I, in a way, give them a part of my heart. <laughs> Only in that way then have we been able to make some really incredible discoveries together. <laughs>